So then we've seen how to make an image, how to run the image to spin up a container, and also how to use volumes to map our local project folder to a folder in the container. And to do all that, each time we run the image, we have to type out that really long command in the terminal to specify the port mapping, the container name, any volumes and extra configuration. And sometimes we might have multiple projects that we want containers for, and we might want to run all those containers at once. For example, we could have this API project, but also a database like MongoDB that we want to run in a separate container, and also a front end like a React app that we want to run in a separate container. And we'd run all those at once so they could communicate with each other. Now you could carry on as we have been doing and just type out that run command for each one, but it can get messy and complicated. And an easier way to manage the containers is by using something called Docker Compose, which is a tool that comes fully baked into Docker itself. So Docker Compose gives us a way to make a single Docker Compose file, which contains all the container configuration of our projects. So we outline the port mappings, volumes, container names, etc. And that one single file will configure all the different containers that we want to run that are part of the same project essentially. So maybe the database, the back end and the front end. So then all we'd have to do is run one really small command to have Docker Compose create all of our images and run them all so we get containers for each one. So let's start by making that Docker Compose file. Now we need to make this in the root directory where all of our different project folders are going to be. And that's going to be in this Docker crash course folder open in VS Code. Now at the minute we only have one project folder in here, the API one, but later we'll also have a front end React project as well. And the Docker Compose file will configure a container for that too. So make a new file inside the root directory in this Docker crash course folder, and that's going to be called docker-compose.yaml. And then inside here is where we're going to write our instructions to Docker Compose, right? So the first thing we do though, is specify the version of Docker Compose we want to use, which is going to be 3.8 for us at the time of recording. So that is going to go in quotes. And after that, on the next line, we have the services and then a colon. And the services property doesn't just have a single value like the version one did, but it has multiple nested properties and values inside it to tell Docker how to build the image for this service and also how to run the container for it. Now, the services are basically the projects that we want images and containers for. So the only one we have at the minute is this API project. So I'm gonna indent after this and call the first service API and then add on a colon. And it doesn't have to be the same name as the folder, but that's what I'm doing just for clarity. Also notice the indent. This is important in a YAML file. So make sure that you add that in. And in fact, whenever you have nested values inside a property inside this YAML file, you need to indent them. So then on the next line, we need to indent again to configure some options for this API service. And the first thing we need to configure is the image itself because Docker Compose actually creates the image as well as run the container for it. So to do this, we add a build option to say how we'll build the image. And all this needs to be is a relative path to the folder where the Docker file for that project is because Docker Compose still uses the Docker file that we create to make the image for that service. So in our case, that's dot forward slash API and then that's it. So here we're basically telling Docker Compose that for the API project or service that we find the Docker file to build the image inside the API folder, right? So that's the build property. Next up after that, we have a container underscore name property. And that property tells Docker Compose what to call our container for this API image when it's run. So I'm going to call it API underscore container or C, where C stands for container. And then after that, we have a ports property, and this allows us to do some port mapping like we did when we ran the docker run command to run an image. Now we're allowed to map several different container ports if we want to. So inside this is a list of mappings if you like, and each list item should be indented and then have a hyphen before it. Then we can add the port mapping, which is just gonna be 4,000 to 4,000, the same as before. 
And after that, finally, we need a volumes property to specify any volumes that we want to create when we run the image to make the container. And again, this is a list of volumes since we can have and need more than one. So each item is indented and starts with a hyphen again. Now, this time when we create a volume, we don't need to specify the absolute path of the folder that we want to use on our computer. Instead, we can just use a path relative to this Docker Compose file. So to begin with, we want to map this API folder to the app folder, right? In the container when it runs. So we can just say dot forward slash API, which is where our source code is found on our computer, then a colon, to say what folder on the container we kind of want to map this to, and that's just going to be forward slash app. And this is going to create a volume to map the API folder to the app folder in the container. The other volume that we need is just going to be dot forward slash app forward slash node underscore modules, just like before, to make sure that the node modules folder in the container doesn't get deleted because of this other volume that we have. And that's it, that's the Docker Compose file pretty much all created now. So the idea behind this is that for any extra service or project that we have in this Docker Crash Course directory that requires an image and a container, we'd add that service to the same Docker Compose file, right? And we'd specify all the same kinds of properties for that service as well. For example, in the next lesson, we'll be adding a React front-end project here too. And I want to be able to Dockerize that. So that project is gonna live over here and then we'll configure that service in the same way as we did the API one inside this same Docker Compose file. For now though, let's try running this Docker Compose file using Docker Compose in the terminal. Now before I do that, I want to completely clean out all the images, volumes and containers already made. So to do that in the terminal, type docker system and then prune and then hit enter just like we did before, and then confirm all this by saying yes to delete everything so far. So now we have a bit of a blank slate again, all right? So now we wanna run Docker Compose, which is gonna use this file to do two things. The first thing it's gonna do is look at the build property of each service. And at the minute, we only have one service, but if there were more, it would look at those two. And then it's gonna find the Docker file in those build paths and use them to build images for each service. So in our case, that's just gonna build the API image, right? The second thing it's gonna do is automatically run those images to create a container for each one. And those containers are gonna be configured according to these properties and values we specified in the Docker Compose file. So in our case, it should make a container called API underscore C, map these ports, and then add these volumes as well. And they're the two things that it does for us. It makes the images and then it runs them to create the containers, right? So how do we now use Docker Compose to do this then? Well, it's pretty simple. First, open up your terminal and make sure you're in this root directory in VS Code, right? So not inside the API one anymore, but inside the Docker Crash Course one, which is where the Docker Compose file is. And then we can just say in the terminal, docker hyphen compose, and then after that, up. That's it, just up. And then hit enter. So when we do that, Docker Compose is gonna find this file. It's gonna run through it to make the API image and then run it to start up a container. And this might just take a short while the first time around, but then once it's done, we'll be able to send a request to the API in the browser. All right, so now that's done, if we head to localhost port 4000, this should work, fingers crossed. And it does, awesome. We can see that response right here. So then, now we've used Docker Compose to make the image and run it to spin up a container, right? And the great thing about using Docker Compose is that now we never have to run those long ass commands in the terminal to run containers. All we have to do is run the Docker Compose up command and it does it all for us based on this Docker Compose file. And the more services that you create, the more of a time saver that becomes. So now let's quickly just see the image created by opening a new terminal and typing Docker images and then hitting enter. And when we do that, we can see that we have that API image right here. Likewise, if we type Docker PS, we can see that running container that it created. Awesome. Now, what about stopping the container and removing it when we're done? Well, to do that, we can just type Docker hyphen compose in the terminal and then after that 
we could say down. And what this would do is stop the container and it would also delete the container, but the image and the volumes would still remain. Now, if you wanted to, you could delete those as well. We could just tack on the flag, double dash RMI, which stands for remove image. And then after that, we say all to remove all the images that were created by Docker Compose. And then also, if you wanted to delete the volumes as well, you could add on the hyphen V flag, and that is gonna remove the volumes created as well. So now, if I was to hit enter, it's gonna do all that. So let me just check. I'm gonna type Docker images to see all the images, and we can see there's none now, cool. And I'll type Docker PS hyphen A to see all the containers. And again, if we do that, we can see there's no containers. So it's deleted the images and containers and the volumes as well. So remember, to make the images for each service and run containers for them, we use the command docker-compose up. Then to stop the containers, we use the command docker-compose down. And then if you want, you can add those extra flags to delete the images and volumes when we do that. All right, awesome. So that's Docker Compose in a nutshell. Next up, we're gonna build a React app over here and Dockerize that using Docker Compose as well.